So the meaning of 101 Gowrie is actually quite simple. It's the address where I grew up in Sydney. And considering the size and the makeup of, of this space, I wanted, when I was able to open my own restaurant, I wanted it to be a really personal space. So then to bring that in terms of the basic aesthetic and then place a name on it that makes a lot of sense to me and also brings a lot to me. So I named it literally after where I grew up. Man, my parents used to have like a lot of sort of house parties, but not like, not like teenagers, but you know, like a lot of dinner parties with friends and close family, like my godparents now. And when family would come over, it would always be parties focused around food. Yeah. Um, so food has been a big part of my life growing up. And I mean, it, it makes sense that I cook now. Um, and having that close relationship with food, it just sort of made sense to also honor that by naming my restaurant after that as well. Because before I lived here, I was living in London um, and then basically decided to move. And then I didn't know much about Holland when I first moved. Like I knew nothing. I knew what the basic tourist would know, you know, windmills, red light district, weed, cheese, pretty basic knowledge but then as I started doing a bit more research what I saw was especially in Amsterdam sort of a food scene that wasn't maybe necessarily emerging but growing and from when I arrived to what it is now it's a completely different scene and one that's I think more than respectable especially within the sort of world dining scene and we'll I think in the coming years get a bit more recognition for that. Honestly, I don't really believe in keeping ultimate goals. I always like to undersell my goals to myself so that when I go above them, it seems much more of a win. So, I mean, I know what I want to achieve, but I don't like to set myself personally, like, huge goals, if that makes sense. I prefer to stay a bit more sort of momentary, but then having long-term goals that just make a bit more sense and are essentially a bit more achievable, knowing that I'm gonna hopefully overperform and, and do better on top of them. I think, I mean, it's just always been a better approach for me, to be honest, like, um, like when I, when I started cooking, it was a while ago now, I remember I sat in this meeting with, with the GM of this hotel, and I was like, I'm going to be a head chef before 25, and they all fucking laughed at me, and I'm like, okay, wankers, and then I got my first head chef job at 24, and the first person I called was him. <laughs> On the sustainability front for restaurants, you could say, you would have to look at your sort of overall makeup and then we're looking at sustainable energy, the products you're using, how you're treating your staff as well, because I think the sustainability conversation is not only environmental, but also in like the micro environment of how you're treating your people. Um, it's it's quite a, a broad and open conversation, but then future-proofing your kitchen, I think is, it's quite challenging, to be honest, because everything will eventually break. It's quite depressing, to be honest. Like, I mean, there's always a, a place that food waste can go, whether it gets onto a guest plate or it goes towards star food or it goes, it can always kind of go towards something, I believe, I mean. Or otherwise, like what we do here is rather than trying to focus on, oh, okay, we want to create this aesthetic and make it look like this, so then we need to order a product and then trim it to look like that and blah, 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 blah. Um, the menu is more tailored towards having things be as sort of natural as possible on the plate, so then we don't even have to really think about combating food waste. We're just literally just exercising it as we go. And that, I think, is like an easier approach to things. And just being wasteful with food is just so fucking dumb. Like, it's... <laughs> Can I swear in this? A kitchen is an interesting environment because it requires a lot of flexibility. And flexibility that doesn't really exist in any other facet of many professions, right? Like, I mean, uh, prof I think every profession to an extent has a certain level of flexibility that you need to exercise. But then in kitchens, it's, it's I mean, it's completely different because it can happen on 
a five-minute basis, a five-day basis, a five-month basis on how flexible you need to be. Um, but then in regards to sort of food waste, that shouldn't really be considered to be a point of flexibility. I mean, if you have good values in terms of what you want to put on the plate on a quality level and serve to your, to your guests, if, if that's sort of in line, of course, you're not just going to serve waste for the sake of serving waste. But I mean, if you can be creative enough to create something that, one, you have minimal waste, and two, it doesn't taste like waste, I mean, it's win-win, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you make more money from that. I think it's hard to give chefs too glamorous of titles, in a way. I mean, I love being a chef, and I think chefs should be, you know, more respected. And you know, there's a lot of points to which chefs should be also, to a, to a degree, glorified. But at the same time, I mean, the chef is a person just doing also a job in a way like I mean a good chef is a person that inevitably cooks well that's as simple as it is I think first quality sort of the quality is important food waste is a huge priority now and I think maybe has been throughout time as well um, to an extent but then it'll be very hard to sort of label chefs as sort of the forefront of a possible movement, you know what I mean? Like, because at the end of the day, a chef cooks. <laughs>